teach you about knowing your VINs. Sounds pretty exciting, right? That's because it is. Because before 1981, there was no standardization of VINs on cars. Before that, it could have been 10 digit digits, it could have been 5 digits, it could have been whatever the car manufacturer wanted. So, in 1981, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration put their foot down and they said, it's going to be 17 digits from now on. And they made all the car manufacturers run with that. That meant that each number within the VIN meant something specific about that car. Whether it was their number in production line, or the color, or the trim, or the engine size, or the year, it all meant something. Except for one of those digits. But we'll get into that later. The letters I, O, and Q were never used in VIN numbers uh, from 1981 until today and going forward. Uh, that's because they get easily confused with the numbers 1 and 0. For the 10th digit of the VIN number, they never used the letters U or Z. Why? I'm not really sure. But that's what they ran with. The first three digits of the VIN are known as the WMI, which is World Manufacturer Identifier. And that is the country of origin, the manufacturer, and the division from that manufacturer. So in this case, the one means United States. If it was J, it would mean Japan. If it was a four, it would mean it was in Canada. So this is the country of where the vehicle was made. The second digit is the the manufacturer that made the vehicle. In this case, General Motors has many different divisions. They have Chevy, and they have Buick, and they have Oldsmobile, and you know several others. This would be the General Motors hat, I guess you'd call it, where division, which is the third digit, is the more specific Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, whatever it is. So in this case, we have United States, General Motors, and Chevy, in this case. The fourth through the eighth, right here, is called the attributes of the VIN. And those include things like safety, um, engine sizes, which series the vehicle is. Um, so in this case, the fourth digit is safety, braking, and suspension. So if you have a, like a heavy duty truck with like eight lug wheels and something real serious, towing package, that sort of thing. This is the digit that will tell you, hey, this, this vehicle has like a, a special suspension and braking package. It also does things for safety. So if you had a special safety restraint system in the car for some reason, that is the digit that would tell you. The fifth digit, in this case an S, is the series. So in the 1980s, for example, General Motors made full-size trucks that were C and K series and R and B series. This just basically meant two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, but it was several different series. So in this case, we have an S series, um, which happens to be an S10 series truck, although they don't usually you know, connect like that. The sixth digit is, along with the seventh digit, digit is the body style. So if it was convertible, or a two-door, or a four-door, whatever that body style is, that is what the sixth and the seventh digit represent. The eighth digit, in this case a Z, is one of my favorites, it's the engine size. So if you go to a junkyard, for example, and you want to know what engine is under the hood of this car, rather than opening the hood, you can go to this thing, and if you know you're looking for a Z engine, then you see Z in the eighth digit, Boom, you got what you want. Um, this is really helpful for vehicles that had two different engines during the same year. So like a S10, for example, a Blazer, um, something like that could have a 4.3 liter that was a Z series or a W series. And they had totally different parts attached to them. So when you're buying engine parts for those trucks, you need to make sure you know if you have a Z series or a W series engine. The ninth digit right here is called a check digit. And they call it a check digit because the purpose of it is to check the rest of the VIN to make sure it's legit. You do this by putting it through some complex math 
um, which you can find on the internet if you go browsing around for it, and you hopefully come out with the right number. You input numbers throughout the di throughout the VIN, and through the math, it spits out a number, and hopefully it's the right one. Hopefully it's a three in this case. If it comes out as a five, you know that these other numbers in the VIN are not legit. Somebody made up this VIN. The tenth digit <coughs> right here is the year, which is amazingly helpful if you're in a junkyard or showing off to your friends or something like that, or if you want to seem like you're magic. You can figure out how the years match up to which letters and which numbers by this simple handy dandy chart, and you'll always know what year the vehicle is. So in this case, for 10th digit we have M, so you come over to the chart, M is a 1991. It's always a 1991. So if you have this chart, which I'll make sure you can print out on this page, you can always know what year a vehicle is. It's great in the junkyard because you can walk up to a VIN, say, oh, this is a 1988, it's a VIN J, and you know you, you know you have the right or the wrong part. So really, really helpful. You can print it out, throw it in your wallet, show off to your friends. The 11th digit is the plant. And that is, that's where the vehicle is made. So a lot of Corvettes were made in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And this letter will tell you, oh, this was made in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Or maybe they were made in Lansing, Michigan. Or maybe Detroit, Michigan. Or, you know, who knows where, Illinois. It could be made anywhere. And this is the digit that tells you which plant it was made at. The last six digits right here are the production line numbers. So most manufacturers, most vehicle manufacturers, start with the number 100001. And that's what they start with with uh, the last six digits. And they go up from there. This normally is not an important number as far as buying parts, unless you have one of those vehicles that changed production um, specifications like halfway through a production line. So you might have a vehicle that had different mirrors in April of 2004 than it did in August of 2004. So if you have one of those vehicles, you need to know this production number, which is really this production number. And that pretty much wraps up VINs. Hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, let me know, and um, maybe we'll do some more for you.